Hello and welcome to Stockwatch, presented by me, Evan Lucas, for Go Market Securities. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature, none of which relied upon as any form of personal advice. Go Market Securities does not know your personal scenario nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of which relied upon as any form of advice at all. It is just general in nature only. Preview of CSL, and I'm going to put this out very clearly. CSL, in my view, is an incredible company. So just put that in mind with regards to how I'm going to talk right now. They report on the 13th of February, and realistically, I want to concentrate not just on their numbers, because let's have a look at them. Expectation is for about a 15 billion US dollar revenue. That would be up about 13% on the previous period. If you look at EBIT, that's coming in at about $4.29 billion. That's a 17% increase year on year. And then pre-tax profit, 3.57 billion US dollars. That would be a 34% increase on last year. They sound like rosy numbers, and they are, but that doesn't always merit a movement in CSL that's to the upside. And so I just wanna put that out there. CSL has a habit of continuing to be bought up into their numbers and then sells off on them. So why? Let's have a look at the major real driver of their entire business, their burring division. Gross margins are expected to jump to about 49.8%. That's about 70 basis points over what they were this time last year. That incremental step up is basically the issues that they've had around the reduced plasma donor costs from a year ago, which is good. They've also managed to get some OPEX sales in line as well. If you look at their in-year globulin sales, they're expected to come in at $2.6 billion. That's 14% year on year. And that's above the midpoint from what they gave in their range for FY24. And if you look at their overall growth, it's about 13 to 17% across their burring division. So that's quite impressive. And don't forget, there's been massive improvements at Vifor. That acquisition, that Swiss company they acquired about two years ago, is starting to pay dividends. However, whenever you have a new purchase, synergies get in the way. There are a few other issues that come about, and Vifor's had some problems with its Venfort overall division, had some issues in the States, had some issues in the European Union, and explains why there was that massive sell-off in CSL end of last year, started this year. Most of that has been recuperated. But it overall shows that basically, again, the numbers are starting to override the issues, and that's a good thing to see. The question that I'm asking leading into the results is, even with those numbers that I gave you before, are they enough? And why I say that is that this company always gets a rosy outlook, and I'm one of the ones that believe there's a rosy outlook for a good reason. But at some point, you do have to ask yourself, is it overly valued? Is it overly done in terms of the euphoric buying? And that probably sometimes says yes, and that may mean that even with a stellar set of numbers that are coming out on the 13th, CSL may do what it does on its number day, drop. Keep an eye on it.